The Prague Lions have dominated since the Global Champions League moved to Europe for the summer. They've already picked up two victories. Can they now make it a third victory in Stockholm? However, the Berlin Eagles, your championship leaders, will have a lot to say about that, as will the Stockholm Hearts, powered by H&M, who have brought their big Swedish superstars to try and ensure victory today. And also, the big news of the weekend needs to be that we will finally get a chance to see Explosion W compete in the GCL this weekend. But hopefully uh, we bring some of the more experienced horses out and it will help just push the team forward. Explosion W, Swedish superstars and a championship lead under threat. It all comes together in Stockholm at the Olympic Stadium. This is round eight of the Global Champions League. In the wonderful Scandinavia, historic but contemporary, urban but most welcoming, Stockholm is a powerful capital with a strong equestrian heritage where top-class horses and riders will give an incredible spectacle. Home heroes and international stars will battle for glory. Long Jeans Global Champions Tour at Olympic Stadium from the 17th to the 19th of June. So the Olympic Stadium plays host to us this weekend. And what is so fascinating about this weekend is not just the fact that the big Swedish superstars are here. We've spoken about how Explosion now finally comes into the mix. What does it mean for the Paris Panthers? What does it mean to Ben Mayer? And what does it mean to the world of show jumping to finally now see this golden Olympic pairing come back in coincidentally, at the Olympic Stadium. This is round eight to the Global Champions League, and we will take you through the starting lineups. We will tell you all about the stories and the different narratives and angles that will unfold potentially over the next 48 hours here on GCTV. But arguably the big talking point, as we mentioned, Explosion W finally gracing our screens again in 2022. GCTV caught up with Ben Mayer to get some thoughts. We're here, um, it's early days yet, it's just his second biggest show out this year, but um, he feels in good shape and might just take him a, a couple of rounds to get back into the rhythm. Backstage, I hear all eyes are focused on explosion. How does it make you feel? Um, I mean, he's special. Uh, he draws a lot of attention just with his, uh, his history and his character. So uh, it's great to have him back at the show, but uh, we're here. Uh, normal bus business as usual, but uh, he does feel great. It will be a good lift for the Panthers. You're in the bottom four right now. Uh, what can we expect from you guys this weekend? Uh, hopefully, we just keep doing the same as what we're doing, but nothing, nothing seems to go our way. We have uh, very unfortunate mistakes between all of the riders that are, that are just way too expensive. So hopefully things will change soon for us and we'll start to, to climb our way back up. Do you think Explosion can help the team a bit? Yeah, I mean, he's uh, obviously it's great to have him back. Um, my other horses have been doing well too, um, but hopefully uh, we bring some of the more experienced horses out and it will help just push the team forward. So might, maybe a podium place for the Panthers this weekend? Um, yeah, we're always doing our best. We, we felt that uh, I can't believe the team hasn't been on the podium yet, I don't think, um, but definitely pushing for that. And we have Dara riding with me today. Um, I don't know what the decision will be overnight if we make a change or not um, between the three of us. We have three riders here this weekend, so uh, we do have a strong team. Do you know already what Saturday will happen or you will see tonight? Uh, no, Rob Herkstra, the team manager for us, is over in Calgary um, with Nael, so uh, he'll be watching, I'm sure, from, from afar and uh, he'll get in contact with us to decide what, what our uh, objective are for tomorrow. It's still very difficult to try and understand how this Paris Panthers lineup, with the horsepower that it has, the riders that it has, can still find itself in 13th place on the overall championship standings. And as Ben Mayer points out there, it seems like it just has not clicked. And if you're looking for a better cog in the wheel to help things click, well then, of course, Explosion is going to be that cog in the wheel to help Paris Panthers over the line, who, as we mentioned coincidentally, are first out the gates. You do not have to wait very very long to see him coming out. Well, who else we're in to see come out? Well, Frederick the Buck is standing by for us live in Stockholm tonight. Frederick, I put you in the same bag as Explosion W. That's how big I rate you on this show. Uh, remind us and tell us why is it, Frederick, that this is such big news that we finally get to see Explosion W. Remind us why this is such a big story this weekend. Well, it's, it's the results of, um, of explosion over the past. His statistics are just un, un, unreal. Um, just to point out that I, I, 
I don't know exactly how many rounds he's jumped over GC. I think you've got the numbers, but his average, his average score is 1.08. That means that basically every round he jumped, he comes out with maximum a time fault. We're not even talking about about um, 0.2 or, or, or 3. No, 0.109. That's so low. That's, so he's so consistent in producing clears. If you look at um, at LGCT as well, his most of his uh, of his Grand Prix, he finished on the podium. So on average, it is more likely to finish on the podium than not. And that is what makes Explosion so exceptional. Also with the fact that he rarely has a high score. He's got, I think, 112 and twice an 8 in, uh, in LGCT, two, two times an 8 in GCL history. So also his high scores are very low. And that makes him such a great contributor to, um, to any team. Plus the fact that he can go really fast without losing shape or without losing any power or jump. That make what makes him so valuable. We just put the scores up, Frederick. 26 out of 33 clear, by the way, for Explosion. You're asking for the numbers there. 26 out of 33. But is it fair to put all of this on Explosion's shoulders? Because you and I could argue that the Paris Panthers have a good lineup. They have strong horsepower. Is it fair to now say, well, this is the weekend, surely, that things will go right for them? That isn't. That doesn't sound fair to me. No, absolutely not, because A, um, it's a competition with two riders and there's no drop score. So even if Explosion jumps double clear, his, the second rider, that's Derek Kenny in this case, who comes into round one with Chic Chic, still has to perform. And they have been producing clear rounds, but it, it hasn't been backed up to, with another clear to produce double clears and even clean sheets. So no, you, you can't put it all on, uh, on Explosion. And it's also the other way around, even if Derek Kenny and his horse Chic Chic, maybe with Tequila J in round two, would jump two double clears. You also have to keep in mind that Explosion has jumped since Prague, no, since Geneva last year, then only started competing last week in Geestrum. So he hasn't got that ring rhythm, that competition rhythm, like he would have in, uh, in uh, two months' time, for example. So also, um, Explosion um, needs to have the chance to get back into the rhythm. Though he has though he is naturally talented and should get into that rhythm pretty quickly, still, you have to put everything into perspective. That is a really good term, ring rhythm. I like that. How much will perhaps the lack of ring rhythm cause and affect Explosion W and Paris Panthers later on this afternoon? Frederick DeBacca will ask you to just pause there. We'll come back to you in a few moments' time. We have discussed what has been taking place over the summer. And as the Global Champions League moved out of Doha, Mexico and Miami into the European summer, things have looked drastically different differently because the Prague Lions arguably have been thus far the team of the summer and we gave the Stockholm Hearts perhaps uh, perhaps justifiably a little bit of slack over the recent events that they had not been able to perform and live up to that championship standing credentials that we had given them but as far as the four events in Europe over the summer are concerned Stockholm Hearts are number two and take a look at Falkensvart United again after struggles in the early stages. Your defending champions have come back exceptionally well and have started to put together a lot of points hauls over recent weeks to once again reignite their season and perhaps give them a real late charge in the second half of the season, not just for a GCL Super Cup semi-final spot. But maybe some might argue that if results continue to come their way, they could put real pressure on those top four teams as well. Now, as you mentioned, Prague Lions, arguably the team of the summer. And let's take you back and remind you as to how they've picked up two victories already thus far in 2022. Is he going to be the man who posts a double clear for himself over round one and round two? With room into the combination and stretch out of it. That's a beautiful ride from Brown Sills. And his home on clear is not super fast. But it's a good clear to start with. Pieter de Vos moms to Pieter de la Roque. Oh, there goes the back rail at Hermes. That means that Stockholm Hearts will start with a rail in hand for the lead and the podium finish, and that's what they have. It is one down for the Vos, but it's four faults over all rounds for Prague Lions. And catch me not, and it falls, and it falls, and now it comes down to time. Because it's just possible that here he gets a little bit behind on the schedule of the Prague Lions. Here's the finish. It's going to be Lions. It's going to be Lions indeed. Lions win in Saint Tropez, and Stockholm Hearts don't capitalize. And Prague Lions are the winners of the Global Champions League in Saint Tropez. Mogre on MTM Vivre le rêve. 
brilliant move from the American. You could think take the wide turn to take your time, but it's actually better to take the inside turn. And Mogray, with a good time, is not super fast, but he's clear in 74.15 seconds. Brian Mogray rides a clear for Prague Lions. De Vos to the upright. That's still standing. First team to score double clear. Here come Prague Lions. Mogri is clear. De Vos is clear. The time is good. For the Lions. It's Peter De Vos. It's not the super safe round. And Claire has got the vertical down. And so the margin reduced to just a single rail. But they still lead. Time allowed is 80 seconds. He does have to worry about the time limit. De Vos is there at 77.87 seconds. Brian Sills with the Lux van T and L. One rail in hand. He knows exactly what he has to do. And he jumps that combination all clear. And is just three fences away from Prague Lions winning their second stage of the season. Time faults won't matter. Is it their second win? It is their second win. How about that? Prague Lions win income. What a season this is turning out to be for the Prague Lions thus far. And we'll talk to you about their lineup in a few moments' time. We'll take you through the starting lineup. But two victories already in the early stages of the 2021 season. Winning in Saint Tropez and winning in Cannes has had a serious impact as to how they have climbed up to the table. Look at them now in second place behind the Berlin Eagles by just two points. Stockholm Hearts powered by H&M with their Swedish superstars in the lineup this weekend will look to try and take the lead back. But Berlin Eagles will certainly fight that. Madrid in motion, we spoke about the most podiums thus far for a team in 2022, yet they still find themselves outside the top three. As you mentioned, Fogelsvart United climbing, Hamburg Giants slipping after a very, very steady start to the year, Hamburg Giants now slowly but surely have started to fall down the leaderboard. Onto the bottom half, Kunstars Stars have done very well. A great turnaround from the team that we saw in 2021. But if you look there in 13th place, Paris Panthers continue to struggle. They will be first out the gate today with Derek Kenny on Chick Chick and Ben Mayer on Explosion W. And to use Frederick Tabaka's term, what is the ring rhythm? going to be like for Explosion, who has not jumped a huge amount thus far already this year? Or will the raw, natural, exceptional talent of Explosion W still deliver clears for the Paris Panthers? We will find out. Right, we go back to the Olympic arena, back to the Olympic stadium. Frederick Tabaka standing by for us. Frederick, we've just shown how good Prague Lions have been in recent weeks, arguably the, the team of the European summer thus far. Does the break from Cannes to Stockholm stop their momentum? Would they have wanted to just keep jumping again and again and again? What does this break mean for a team like Prague Lions in particular? Um, if you mean the break between, between Cannes and Stockholm, I don't think it, it, it meant a lot. Um, I think it was a, a welcome break to many teams, riders and horses um, to recharge the batteries and to get ready here for this event in, uh, in Stockholm. Also, if you look at the riders and horses that they've got in their lineup this weekend, Stockholm, uh, Prague Lions, um, it's a completely different lineup. Yes, they have got Peter de Vos, but de Vos is here with uh, Cannabis and with uh, Moms Colrain. On the other hand, it's Leopold van Asten who is going to make his uh, season debut with the uh, VDL group Hutch and Nino du Roton. So they've brought in uh, a new set uh, of horses for de Vos and a new rider in Leopold van Asten. The break um, hasn't affected them that much. I think you more have to look at the four weeks back to back that um, asks a lot of management, riders and horses to be available at all times and to be ready at all times. So uh, I think the break was welcome for everybody. That's a very good point as well. Perhaps after such excessive jumping over four weeks, perhaps that break is quite necessary. You speak about Leopold von Asten. He's one of uh, a handful of debutants this weekend. And I understand that the season begins to get long, Frederick, and these debutants have to eventually feature. But if I think about Prague Lions trying to surge up the table, a debutant, is that a risk or do they naturally have to go with rotation at this point of the season? Can Leopold von Asten pull it off? Rota Rotation is exactly the right words. Uh, in the end, you have to use your horses, you have to use your riders. You can't keep putting um, 
the, ha the same horse and the same rider in all the time. They also need to have their break, their breather. Um, so you have to rotate, especially when it comes down to it, you have to know who's fit and who isn't. You have to be planning, you have to be aware um, of who has got his horses in good shape. And you only know that by testing them. And that's what they are going to do here now, I think, Prague Lines with uh, Leopold van Asten. Madrid Emotion are an interesting case study this year as well. Today they'll be jumping Jack Whittaker and Michael van der Flut. And we spoke in a recent Insider about their podium haul and how good they've been in 2022. Yet somehow, Frederick, with all those podiums, they've yet to get themselves on top of the podium. What do you think has been missing for Madrid Emotion thus far that's seen them perform but just not get over the line? I, I, I understand your, um, your angle. Um, if you turn it around, if you win a stage, you get 30 points. If you come, if you come uh, third, you get uh, 21 points. That's a nine-point difference. If you turn that around, um, 21 minus nine, here we go again. That <laughs> is 12, exactly. That's 12. So just, just to, to, to point out the difference, um, you, 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 um, Madrid and Motion only have had on four occasions two teams that were better than them. On the other hand, if you look at who, they, who they've kept behind them, that's much more impressive. So if you look at it from a, from a positive perspective, it's been a very strong performance from, um, from Madrid in motion. What has kept them from, from finishing higher? I think that they've played the championship game. And I think that they've uh, ridden smart, not tried to win the stage, settle for third, if you can settle for third, of course. In the end, um, they would love to win a stage. Mm. But if you don't go all in, if you don't take all the risks, that's what happens. Then you finish third. But you finish third on four occasions. Maybe if they have had ridden, ridden with more risk and have the ambition to win the stage and not win for the championship, um, they would have won one stage, but they would have lost another one big time. And then they maybe would not have scored the 21 that they scored, 21 uh, championship points that they have scored now on four occasions, but they would have dropped much further. And I think that's a little bit the thinking that was um, on, uh, on team management of Madrid in motion. Yeah, it has been that continuous points haul that Madrid in motion have done exceptionally well this season, so well that they've now found themselves inside the top four and are at the moment now in line for a GCL Super Cup semi-final spot. You can see the riders that will now make their way into the ring, the course walk well and officially uh, underway there, uh, as we see now Michael van der Flirten currently on screen. Frederick de Bakker, we'll let you get back inside the arena. Please go uh, continue getting a good eye for us and we'll come back to you in a few moments time uh, as we get ready to give you an idea remind you just how Madrid Emotion now have been performing with regards to those podium finishes and as Frederick pointed out it is more perhaps about the picking up of championship points that has helped Madrid Emotion move along they have podiumed more than any other team this season Four podiums for them three for Stockholm Hearts and two for the Berlin Eagles and Prague Lions but if you take a look at those gold medals that are there for the Prague Lions and the Berlin Eagles, they are making the most of their championship podiums. Right, well, Philip Schulzer Topoff makes his debut for the GCL in 2022 this season, a seasonal debut, shall I say. And we are excited to see him, especially since we were expecting him to jump far, far earlier in the year. And something that Ludger Bierbaum confirmed to us on the Insider quite a few series ago was the fact that he had injured his shoulder, his collarbone, in fact, and landed up spending a lot of time out of the game in rehab and recovery. Well, we caught up with Philip Schulzer Topoff to find out exactly how and what he's feeling. I had an injury in the double combination. I fell off together with my horse and I broke my collarbone. Uh, the first weeks really was pain and uh, sleeping really difficult. But uh, then with, with physiotherapy and, uh, yeah, and a lot of discipline, uh, I was after four weeks in the saddle again and then another week later to my first show. That's actually quite fast, but um, was it hard not to ride for four weeks? Yeah, the first time, um, it was a really welcome break, and uh, yeah, after the first week, ten days, maybe two weeks, I uh, was really missing it, and uh, yeah, quite hard. You think a lot when you when you can do nothing, and uh, not being able to ride by yourself. Uh, you look for many results from the other guys, and um, think about the sport and look what they do and what you can make better, what others do do better than than myself, and. Um, yeah, it's an interesting, boring and a little sad time. 
You will be riding for the Berlin Eagles. You will be riding with the winner's band around your arm. How does that feel? Uh, really strange. Uh, will be my first global champions competition uh, for the team. And uh, starting directly with the winner's band, it's uh, not the usual case, I think. Um, yeah, we will see how it works. It's just Philip and Philip here for the Berlin Eagles this weekend. Does it give like any extra pressure? You guys have just two riders on the team? Sure, we are only we two and uh, we have no reserve. So everything has to work well and it uh, kicks me on and uh, makes me more fighting than, than even though. And here we actually see that very armband being placed onto the left arm of Philip Schulze Topov. And he makes a good point. How interesting that as a seasonal debutant to come into the competition for the first time and all of a sudden be given the championship leading armband. Well, the Berlin Eagles, they put themselves in that position. Great shot there of Philip Schulze Topov getting his armband. But he's not the only rider that has been struggling with injury. And as physiotherapist Frederick de Bacca found out, we caught up with Laura Klapacher to see how her rehab has been going as well. Okay, let's, let's, um, let's do a little exercise on, uh, on Thursday afternoon. Start with your left arm. There goes Will. And uh, with the right? How far? Uh, you're the kidding me, right? Steps, yeah. I mean, riding is okay because I, need to, I don't need to lift my arm so much. Um, it's getting better, but it just needs time, a lot of physio. Because that's why, why we haven't seen you all season on, uh, on GCL so far. Exactly. Okay. My plan was to do Madrid, Saint-Tropez, Hamburg, Cannes. But then my, <laughs> my plan was home. Yeah, now this is the first, uh, the first appearance. In the, uh, it's raining in the background. We just had um, Philipp Schulze Tophoff uh, warming up. Um, he's, he also dislocated his shoulder. He's also running with a, with a special vest. Is that also the case for you? Yeah, it's helping a lot. It's um, like fixing a bit the arm. Otherwise, when the ho horse pulls, there's like the shoulder is still too loose. So Laura Klapacher now in picture in the London Knights and you can see under her jumper there that there is a protective vest that is just creeping out from under her red London Knights jersey there and she has told us now that she needs to wear that to try and feel a little more comfortable. She and Philip Schulze Topov uh, will then be riding like we saw Jack Whittaker recently as well because of his injured spleen uh, that he then will be riding with a protective gear as well. Well much the same for Philip Schulze Topov and for Laura Klapacher today in GCL round one in Stockholm. Now, speaking of that, I must ask that Frederick de Bakker is uh, dishing out physiotherapy services. I had no idea. I have loads and loads of problems and I would love him to be able to try and get uh, some of my issues sorted out. Now that Laura Klapak has received the consultation, I wonder if Philip Schulze Topoff received the consultation as well from the physiotherapist <laughs> de Bakker. Uh, we will cross into him back inside the Olympic Stadium in just a few moments time. Also to try and catch up with some of the riders, try and get some ideas on how the course is shaping up this weekend as well and what these riders can expect over the next two days of jumping from GCL round one to GCL round two and the LGCT Grand Prix as well. Frank DeBacca, I did not know that you were a qualified physiotherapist. You look very good there with Laura Klapacher. Are you able to help uh, some of the other riders out to make a little side money, perhaps? <laughs> It's a little bit the story of my life. I'm, I'm qualified for nothing, so I try a little bit of everything. That's, that's literally how my life goes. Um, Coventry, didn't really train for it, but just giving it a go. Physio, uh, it, it's just stretch. In the end, it's stretching. And, when, and they will tell me when it hurts, so I can't do anything wrong, can I? Jack of all trades. I love it. I love it. But there's a story to tell you, Frederick, isn't it? There's, there's a, a story around camaraderie, around toughness, about coming to the team. Because we can talk about Jack Whittaker riding with his injured spleen. And now Philip and Laura coming to the party. What does that tell us about, you know, the, the camaraderie, the desire to compete of these professional athletes that they call, or they answer the call when the team comes? Isn't that true? That's exactly it. Um, and this is what we've said at the beginning of the season in our podcasts. Um, in the end, it comes down to commitment. You can have the best riders and horses on the team. If they don't commit to the team, they will not produce a result. And that is the opportunity for those teams with 
um, the, the stars that shine a little bit less bright with the horses that have a, bit, a little bit less fame, um, if they commit to, the, to their team and they, they, they come when asked and they try their best, they can overtake those lower performing, or those, those high ranked uh, teams. And if you look at the standings at the moment, it's actually the case. Um, look at Madrid in motion, for example, compare them to Valkeswaard United or um, to uh, Prague Lions. It's, it's, it's a great example. By the way, Prague Lions, Ben Meer, riding with an injury to his thumb, just to add that to your, uh, to your list of injured riders and to my list of uh, physio clients. I was going to say, add it to your list of clients. Don't add it to my list. Add it to your list. Right. Frederick, only one double clear, if I'm not mistaken, in Stockholm last year. That was uh, Fergensvart United with Peter Fredriksson, as we know. Talk to us about the difficulty of, firstly, this venue, but then perhaps bring it back to today. What can these riders expect? What makes Stockholm so difficult? Well, there's a lot that makes Stockholm so difficult. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll just show you as we walk to the edge of the arena. Um, uh, we go that way, and I hope that I can show you, but if, if my cameraman, follow me, come here, come here, come here. Yeah, there we go. Um, on the other side of the ring, there's carpets now. Come here, have a look here. There, no, yeah, there. A bit more, a bit, <laughs> bit more, there we go. So there's carpets there. That's actually what covers um, the athletics track um, that sits on top, so the carpet sits on top of the athletics track. As you know, Mark, uh, more of an athlete than I am. Um, every athletics track is kind of an oval. As, and you can see that actually this is an oval. So there's, normally four straight sides to, the, to an arena. That isn't the case here. So this, um, this the side where I'm, I'm at right now actually starts in the corner at the other end and bends all the way around the arena, which makes it visually very nice, but makes it very difficult um, to, 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 to judge. I, I can imagine if you ride here, for example, in this line, you always get the feeling that you're riding towards the LED boarding, towards the edge of the arena. So you have to... Um, yeah, stay straight and, and not look at the edge of the arena. That's one thing. Now, a second thing that I want to show you, if we, if we go down a little bit, and I don't know if you can see, but there's actually quite some slope on this ring. Right here, we are at the lowest point, and just past the middle is the highest point of the ring. Then it stays very flat, but from here, there's quite a significant um, slope, which plays a role. Now, if you look at the statistics, Statistics tell us that um, in terms of clears, it produces an average average uh, number of clears throughout the season. If you look at the uh, average scores, average scores are actually much higher than we have um, in average over the season. So in general, I know in general, um, this is um, actually an arena that produces higher average scores than most uh, arenas this season. Okay, thank you very much, Frederick de Bakker. We'll let you go as you get ready to come into the commentary box and we get ready to deliver to you Global Champions League Round 1 live from Stockholm. And as Frederick says, perhaps an awkward shape in the arena and there is an undeniable slope as well from the lowest point working its way up to the highest point as well. And let's not forget that the first team out the gate is Paris Panthers. Derek Henney and Chick Chick, and then in search of that ring rhythm, Ben Mayer and Explosion W, as the Paris Panthers try and work their way up from 13th on the overall championship standings. They will be followed by Fogelsvart United, Scandinavian Vikings, Berlin Eagles, Shanghai Swans, and Miami Celtics. Stay with us here on GCTV for round one.